Hey girl, you into a man who can draw lines on a map? Maybe put down a couple arrows? Well, my friend, that's me. I'm here for you. We are back, everybody. It's Red World time. Now, originally, I wanted to cover Red World last year when I was doing my Nostalgia November series, going back at old mods. But unfortunately, if you didn't hear, the mod developer actually passed away. So this mod is a what if the Soviets actually won the Cold War type scenario, I believe. I could be a bit tricky on the law. All I really remember is the Bernie Sanders mad rampage through North America and the fact that uh, Texas has been... Well, uh, how could you do that to Texas? But like I said, unfortunately, the uh, mod developer actually passed away, and this is a fan fork of the mod, which is, uh, is a very sad tale that anyone in this community has passed away, but I'm glad to see the work has been carried on. As far as I'm aware, though, nothing has actually changed. It's just been brought up to date with the current patch. But yeah, we start off in the year 2010. Uh, it's pretty much a... Originally, I'm pretty sure it was like an offshoot of like Millennium Dawn. Uh, I could be wrong there. I haven't played this since the last video I made on there, which would probably be years ago. Uh, but yeah, I can't really remember specifically how things work. I know we have the Democratic League, which uh, the New Zealand's actually not in, because apparently Winston Peters leads the Winston Junta, okay? And obviously in a world dominated by the Soviet Union, we're gonna have to play them. Now, there is a specific path that I'm obviously going to do, if you, you are familiar with Red World, that I'm not even sure if I ever did on a video, but... It's gonna happen this time. Okay, I can't remember if they used to use the Millennium Dawn tech tree, but uh, thankfully we've just got a reskin vanilla one, which I much prefer over the cluster F that is the Millennium Dawn one. So thank you mod developers if you change that. I gotta doubt what we've been doing in the Soviet Union already. How is this a modern plane, <laughs> guys? <laughs> I don't think this is modern. So we don't have any decisions, just the Cuban Missile Crisis, which gives us a bit of insight as to what the hell went on in this world. How dare you assassinate my comrade Yasov? Who the hell am I gonna put in charge of this country now? Eh, yeah. who the hell am I gonna put in charge? Ah, oh, shucks, we got a we got a a bunch of candidates here. You know, a lot of good people that are very well qualified. But I'm gonna pick Putin. There he is. There he is. Now, if I remember correctly, we got Putin in charge. Things start getting pretty damn spicy. There we go. Unfortunately, Gorbachev slipped in the shower and fell on my gun and was shot five times in the back of the head. So, um... Oh, yes. Oh, my God. This is the mod with, like, the 20-way civil war in Libya. I completely forgot that this was a thing. Oh, man. I need to... Who do I want to back in this cluster? Oh, my God. I need to decide. Obviously, being the Soviet Union, you might be a bit confused why I went ahead and decided to support the person I supported. Because they're not communists. And truth be told, um, well, neither will I be soon enough. Okay, meanwhile in this scenario, the UK is just playing out normal UK stuff, except they got Ian Duncan Smith in control instead. We got a second coup in Rome. I don't remember how Italy plays out in this mod, but uh, it's, it's starting to look pretty spicy itself. Okay, I found out that Syria is apparently a kingdom in this mod, so of course I gotta help out my ally. Alright, okay. Things are objectively getting worse for the UK. You know, all these countries joining the Warsaw Pact's one thing, but um, I don't think it's gonna exist soon enough. Oh, well, there you go. We helped out in Syria. I have no idea what they're gonna make of that, though. I'm kind of scared. Uh-oh. I remember where this guy goes, I think we can all agree, that is the most cursed image in the entire goddamn world. Right, Bernie's sleeper mode's been activated and he's, he's starting his conquest across America. Now, whilst we won't align in the future, I also really want to see you just go completely crazy and uh, take over the world, Bernie. So I'm going to help you out a little here. There you go, one step closer to American unification for Bernie Sanders. Alright, maybe helping Gaddafi wasn't the best idea, he's now invading Egypt. Actually, that's a great idea. Let's help. Very traveler, you've been greeted by a decision. Maintain the path of communism or reverse the movement and become a weird monarchist dictatorship under Putin. Uh, nothing like helping out my Libyan brothers to help conquer North Africa, apparently. You'd think other members of the government might have clocked onto the fact I've been doing some real shady stuff by now, wouldn't you? Well, Gaddafi now owns all of Egypt and Sudan. Have fun with that! Meanwhile, uh, we're just going for a little jog. 
to the capital. Uh, apparently this is Civil War, the video game right now, as now India has broken out into revolt. Uh, I don't know who's going to win here, but I, I can't unfortunately help you at the moment. So we do have a couple options. We don't actually have to do the whole Putin Tsar thing. Uh, of course, the other options are incredibly lame, though. So I don't know why you'd ever not do it. I mean... Putin a czar, come on. Kinda interesting how no one in the government actually saw this coming. Especially since, you know, I probably had to finance this suit on our official record somewhere. So they, they probably had to sign off on that. Unfortunately, we don't have many focuses to actually continue and mess with our Western communist neighbors. But we do get ones that start civil wars all over uh, Scandinavia. And, um, oh, we're trying to get the monarchists back in control over here. All right, we're gonna try try our best to keep these revolutions uh, like going while we can. Oh god, okay, it's not looking too good in Norway. Although none of them can beat my tank out of Oslo or the uh, the Norwegian Revolution camp over here, and I'm just trying to snake all their victory points while I can to capitulate them. There we go. So we got Sweden and Norway. We didn't get Denmark, but I I don't want Denmark, so it works out good for the rest of us, really. And now we need to uh, well, we need to reconquest the whole you know Eastern Bloc. Meanwhile, the Americans are going crazy ham trying to reunite their nation under Mr. Shanders who um, if you don't remember this mod uh, he goes kind of crazy maybe I should redo the birdie one leave a like if you want to see me do birdie again I haven't changed my army since the start of the game so this might go terribly but I also need the army XP to change my template so it's kind of you know uh, good and bad at the same time there you go one has been knocked off but uh, we've got plenty more conquesting to do to get Europe back under our thumb and I'm not too interested in taking too much land. I just want to make sure we're putting the monarchies back in place and creating feudal Europe. Uh, interested in what the British are doing, though. I know they've also got an interest in focusry, so, uh, oh, never mind. You know, maybe you guys should have just stayed in the Warsaw Pact and just accepted my rule. There you go, Michael's back. Straight away trying to make friends with Nigeria for some reason as well. There you go, after uh, just killing everyone in America, Bernie Sanders has unfortunately died of a heart attack. I just realized that I've put... Putin in charge of three different cabinet positions in my government. Seems to be a history of the Russians coming into Hungary and absolutely smacking them into oblivion, isn't there? But think about it, I smack you into oblivion, you get yourself a cool monarch, or you lose one. Although that might be something to do with the current leadership of the UK. Oh no. That's right, Czechoslovakia, monarchy is back in fashion. Let me just, you know, kill a few hundred thousand of your people, and then I'll give you a cool crown. I almost forgot about Finland. How could I forget about Finland? Right, we are at 100% world tension, so at any point, a faction could be either created or they could join one. And since I'm declaring we're on bigger people now, that's always gonna be a bit of a worry. Well, I did go ahead and jinx it because they joined the faction along with France of uh, India and North Korea. I'm kind of scared, guys. Although China has also now declared war on India, so... I could invite them to my faction, but I also kind of want to take China out. Great news, it is 2019, I have nuclear weapons, and Paris has no air defense whatsoever, so I think you can kind of see where this is going. That's right, it's the Russian strategy of nuking feudalism back into our enemies. You see, you might think it might not work, but trust me. It definitely worked. Oh, that's very, very unfortunate for you there, France. <laughs> there you go. To clean up that pocket, we have now completely blitzed the French, and once they capitulate, we now need to deal with the Indians and the Koreans. There you go. The last stand of the French is the Koreans down here. Right, pushing into Korea is not very fun, considering I mechanized all of my army, and these are all mountains, so, um... Yeah, just doing it the old-fashioned way. So I noticed a long time ago that the Italians were at war with the Swiss, but um, I, I didn't think they were losing this badly until they started pushing. And then I checked the war casualties over here, and, uh, well, the Swiss lost 700k. The Italians have lost 4.1 million. 2.9 to the Swiss alone. Meanwhile, I'm just uh, making my way downtown, and uh, I've got to get to India somehow, so... Hello, China. It's probably very unorthodox to be doing this instead of just uh, inviting you to my faction, but then you wouldn't be a monarchist, and this is the monarchist feudalist crew. They're also just going to accidentally leave, you know, a couple million pieces of equipment for the Swiss on their border accidentally, and if they just so happen to pick it up, I'm, um, it's all yours, baby. Wow, they actually did it. The Swiss just annexed the Italians. All of the Italians. In the meantime, uh, we've killed 26 
million Chinese people. And then we replace them with an empire. And uh, I don't know who this guy might be. I'm sure someone might know the law somewhere, but uh, now it's time to finally take out India. There we go. Another kingdom under our belt. Okay, peace deal has been completed, and uh, feudalism is definitely back in fashion, everyone. It's, uh, it's just we're almost HRE levels over here back in Europe. And over here in Asia, it's even better, because we've got the Empire of China, obviously. Then I set up the uh, <laughs> the House of Yi in Korea. Then we got the Empire of India. we got Tibet. We got the whole goddamn crew back together, and... Well, it didn't turn out too well for German. So yeah, I'm very sorry for the loss of the mod developer. I think he went by Kaiser and his real name was Tom. I hope wherever he might be in the afterlife that he's looking down at everyone, enjoying his mod and being like, Damn, can't believe you put Vladimir in charge again for the millionth time. But uh, in all seriousness, he did bring a lot of joy to a lot of people. This is a very good mod that the community did love. So I'm very glad that it's been brought back. I hope they don't change too much. Because it, um, I feel like it's kind of a, a remembrance piece for, for Tom, so, yeah, I'm just glad it's back, and that more people can enjoy it, because that guy, well, he left behind a piece of art, that's for sure, so, um, very sad for any of his friends or family that might be watching this, but just know, he's brought a lot of joy to a lot of people in this world, so, uh, that's all I'm gonna say on that, and, uh, I think I'll do another video on Red World and go back to burning. But uh, until next time, guys, I'll catch you later.